In this video, we will build an ideal op-amp. In the tutorial, you saw that the ideal op-amp can be modeled as a voltage-dependent voltage source. So we're going to build an op-amp model and verify that that is correct. Open up LTSpice and start a new schematic. So when you go down to place a part, normally we're looking at this voltage source here. So that is not what we're going to be using to build this model. What you want to look for is E and E2. Now the only difference between these is where the plus and minus terminals are. So I prefer E2 just because I like my minus terminal on top, but it's completely, it's a personal preference. The other thing you can do is you can also model this as a voltage dependent current source. So that would be G and G2. So go ahead and take E2, plop that down. Now a model consists of a schematic and a drawing. So first we're going to build the schematic and then we'll worry about the drawing. So in the, uh, in the tutorial it says that an ideal op-amp has zero output resistance. So I like to actually add an a uh, resistance of 1 ohm just to prevent any errors from popping up. Okay, so this is a voltage dependent current source with a minus terminal up top. Here you have the circuit name, which is or the part name, which is E1, and then you have this value down here, which is E. This is actually the gain. So in most texts, this is called A. Sometimes you'll see it as a capital G. But anyway, we need to set this. An ideal op-amp has infinite gain. So we can't put infinite in here, but we can set a really big value. Let's say 10 meg. And if you went through the first tutorial, uh, you should have seen how to label like the difference between milli and mega. So MEG is the capital M-E-G. What you could also do is do 10E6, which just gives it an exponent of 6, but I prefer the capital. And now we need to make our labels. So this port is going to be an input, and we'll label this one B-. minus. Do the same thing for the B-plus terminal. And then we need to change the port type to output, and we'll label this V out. Um, let's just make this a little bit prettier. Kind of insane. Okay. All right. So we've got our three terminals. We've got our gain set. We've got our grounds where they need to be. Okay, let's go ahead and save this schematic. And you want to choose a, a unique name. You don't want to name it op-amp with all lowercase letters because that's how LTSpice has already defined an op-amp and it won't let you make a new circuit symbol. So I'm going to call this capital OP underscore amp, or zero, zero, one. So from here you can go to hierarchy, and you can either do create a new symbol, or what I haven't done yet is open this sheet symbol, and what it should do is try to auto-generate one that makes it just a little bit easier, because it goes ahead and takes the tags for your inputs and outputs, and then translates them onto a symbol. So let's see how that works. So open the sheet symbol, can't find one, generate one, yes. So here we got our V plus and V minus terminals and our V out. This is not the standard uh, shape for an op-amp model. So we're gonna redo that box. And go ahead and move this name up and out. And let's go to draw line. And we're just gonna make a big triangle. And now V minus should be up top, so I'm going to move those as well. 
I'm gonna move this one here, move this one there. And I'm kind of particular. I like my output to be on the outside of the symbol that if you don't mind uh, where the placement of the labels, then don't worry about it. But I'm gonna right click on V out and I'm gonna change the pin label justification from right to left. There, I think that looks much better. But yeah, that was actually a little bit simpler than designing a, a symbol from scratch. And the cool thing is that it automatically ports over your name that you labeled that you named your schematic. So if you just click save, and then you open the folder where you saved it, you'll find both the schematic and the symbol right there, which is pretty nice. All right, so let's save that. We'll exit, and now we want to prove that this schematic, this symbol, behaves the same as an ideal op amp. Let's, let's test that. Let's go ahead and exit out of those two things. Put a file, new schematic. Place down a part. So what you want to do is find your top directory, and what it should do is automatically find wherever you have parts saved. So here's the op-amp model we just built. Pop that down. So let's just try this. Uh, put down a voltage source. Go back to our top directory where all of our normal parts are. Voltage. We'll say this is a uh, one volt. Let's label this V out. Let's just do a run. We'll do a transient analysis. It doesn't really matter. We'll do a stop time of one millisecond. Let's see what happens. So, let's figure out what's going on here. This is showing negative 10 megavolts. Is that what we should be seeing? So if we open up this, uh, open the schematic, we know that V out, according to the equation on the tutorial page, is going to be equal to V plus minus V minus multiplied by 10 meg. So in our circuit here, we have V plus, which is zero, minus V minus, which would be negative one, multiplied times the gain that we set, which was 10 meg. So 10 megavolts is exactly what we should see. And we don't see any fluctuation in the output. We don't see any voltage drop due to output resistance. And we don't see any current draw at the plus and minus terminals, which would cause some sort of an offset or some other um, problem at the input terminals. Um, so I would say that the ideal operation here is exactly as expected um, and that we did we did a pretty good job.